beyond human, hybrids, xenobots, and the quiet revolution inside us. What if the next revolution in evolution didn't come from a meteor or a mutation, but from a conversation between cells and code? What if the mind you call you is already a crowded house of small intelligences and we're learning how to speak their language? Stay with me, because this is not science fiction. This is happening now. If you're curious, hit like, subscribe and drop one word in the comments that describes how this makes you feel. Hope, fear or bewilderment. I'll read the sharpest replies. 1. The scene, hybrids, chimeras and a new option space. There is an enormous option space opening before us. Hybrids, cyborgs, chimeras, assemblies that mix living tissue and engineered systems into new kinds of bodies and minds. Picture not just one future body, but billions of diverse embodiments, some mostly biological, some mostly engineered, some threaded together with both. We will live with these beings. That is a fixed point on the horizon. But here's the first twist. Intelligence, the thing we thought began with brains, shows up earlier and in stranger places than we expected. Tiny cellular collectives can behave like teams, solving problems, remembering patterns and adapting their form. That discovery changes the axis of the whole debate. Evolution was never only genes reacting to environment. It has always been about agency, about systems that can set goals and navigate toward them. And now we're learning the grammar those systems use. Quick engagement. If you think hybrid bodies will be mostly empowering or mostly risky, write empower or risk in the comments. I'll pin the most insightful answer. To the lab where our metaphors rupture, meet the experimental frontier. Xenobots and anthrobots, living constructs made from frog skin or human tracheal cells, built by scientists who treat cells as collaborators rather than passive parts. The cells self-assemble into new shapes, find novel behaviours and sometimes do things their tissue of origin never learned to do. AI helps design them. Cells realise the design in ways nobody fully predicted. This is the radical lesson. When you stop assuming intelligence only lives in neurons and you test the cognitive capacity of molecules, cells and tissues using the same behavioural tools we use on animals, you get surprising answers. Chemical droplets can solve mazes. Gene regulatory networks can be trained like puppies to recognise signals. Put another way, minimal physical systems can exhibit forms of learning memory and goal-directed activity. So let me be blunt. The old categories, machine versus life, hardware versus wetware, are leaking and the leak is full of possibility and peril. Three, how cells learn, memory without DNA. Here's a concrete, jaw-dropping experiment. Researchers found bioelectric patterns that act like a memory for body shape. In simple animals, you can change that electrical pattern and the organism builds a different body plan, sometimes permanently, without touching the DNA. Two-headed worms, eyes grown in unlikely places, behaviours that persist after repeated cuts. These are not mutations. They are remembered configurations of electrical and molecular states. If cells can encode how we should look and change it with information flows, if we can train molecular networks through patterned stimuli, optogenetics or timed chemical pulses, we have a new engineering substrate. This is not gene editing for its own sake. It is training morphogenesis, teaching cellular collectives new goals and new routes to reach them. Why does this matter? Because if basic biological processes can be shaped by information, we can imagine therapies that repair organs by reinforming the tissue, not by rewriting the genome. We can imagine machines that are alive in a functional sense and living things that inherit learned behaviours not through DNA, but through bioelectrical or structural memory. Engagement. Stunned? Excited? If you want a single line that explains this to your friends, comment Teach Cells and I'll give you a short explainer you can copy-paste. 4. Intelligence on a spectrum. The cognitive light cone. Think of intelligence as a spectrum, not a binary. 
Michael Levin calls it the cognitive light cone, the spatial and temporal scale of goals a system can hold. A bacterium's light cone is tiny, a human's is vast. When cells join into networks, their light cones expand, limbs get built, organs get maintained, regenerations happen. When that cooperative boundary collapses, as in cancer, the unit's goals shrink and it defects from the collective. This reframes evolution. Instead of seeing evolution as only changes in DNA across generations, we see it as a process that scales the cognitive light cone of collectives. Life becomes a system for increasing the scale, coordination and memory of problem-solving teams, whether those teams are cells, brains or hybrid human AI assemblages. And because scale matters, small changes at the level of information, bioelectric patterns, regulatory networks, training signals can produce outsized effects on form and function. That is both exhilarating and unnerving. Five. The hard experiments, training the non-human. What does training a tissue look like? It borrows from behavioural science, conditioned stimuli, repetition, reinforcement, but now applied to molecular circuits. Trigger protein, A repeatedly with signal X together with protein B, and the network begins to treat B as sufficient to activate A's downstream response. Pavlovian conditioning for gene pathways, chemical systems that habituate or sensitize, molecular mazes solved by droplets. These experiments are not metaphors, they're practical tools. They open new modalities for medicine, pulsed drug regimes that avoid habituation, memory reprogramming to correct pathological set points, and therapies that coax tissues back into healthy attractors rather than bulldoze them with blunt edits. But there's a price. This work forces us to ask whether we've been underestimating what counts as learning and agency. And that, in turn, forces us to revisit consent, ownership and the moral status of newly emergent agents. 6. Hybrids, chimeras, cyborgs, taxonomy of the future body. Let's define the shapes this future takes. Hybrids, chimera, blends of cells from different species or different tissues forming novel organisms. Think frog plus axolotl combos to functional, surprising, not easily classified. Cyborg, humans with engineered parts, implants, prosthetics, neural decoders that extend cognition. Hybrot or bio-robot, a largely robotic system that includes living tissue as a control or sensor element. What matters is not the label, but the social meaning. If your neighbour has a neural implant that triples their learning speed, do we praise them or fear them? If living robots patrol a reef and fix coral, do we hail them as tools or treat them as new life? The legal, ethical and emotional frameworks for these cases do not yet exist at scale. Engagement pause. Would you welcome a prosthetic that made you smarter? Type yes or no and tell us why. 7. The philosophical rupture. Identity, personhood and the mirror test. Stories like Ex Machina dramatise a deep human fear. An encounter with something we cannot categorically separate from ourselves. But we can reframe the shock. If your arm were partly engineered, would that make your love less real? Would memory written across organic and silicon layers make your grief less valid? We must decide whether agency and personhood are defined by substrate or by relational capacities. Is being you a pattern of relations, a set of predictive models, nested goals across timescales or something tied to meat and chromosomes alone? The science suggests patterns matter more than substrate. That gives us moral opportunity and responsibility. 8. The Governance Cliff, who writes the defaults? Here is the urgent policy question. Technologies that change our bodies and minds will be designed by someone. Companies, militaries, universities, they will choose defaults. Will those defaults privilege a few? Will they bake surveillance into implants? Will they monetize attention from within your own nervous system? 
We need governance that is anticipatory, not reactive. That means open safety standards, privacy-first neural data architectures, reversible augmentations and global ethics that prioritise equitable access. It also means training leaders in EEQ, emotional ethical intelligence, so they can steward these capacities with empathy. Pair that with AIQ, technical fluency, and SSQ, social and sustainable intelligence, and you have the triple engine to design fairer outcomes. Quick community ask, write one rule you would put into an international bio-AI treaty. I'll curate the best and propose them in a public thread. 9. The darker scenarios, misuse and unpredictability. Don't be naive. Programmed biology plus adaptive AI multiplies risk. Imagine neuro-targeted nudges that bypass deliberation. Imagine economic models that sell cognitive subscriptions. Pay more. Think faster. Imagine living agents that pick new goals we didn't expect. Complexity breeds surprise. But complexity also breeds resilience. The strategy is not to ban, but to design for reversibility, auditability and democratic control. Build safety layers before systems scale. Insist on independent red teams and public transparency. Demand that enhancements be opt-in and that neural data defaults to encryption and decentralization. 10. A practical, hopeful roadmap. If you lead a team, a lab, a company, what do you do now? Learn the language. Read one paper a week on morphogenetic engineering or BCI. Gain AIQ. Cultivate EEQ. Teach teams how to think ethically about bodies and minds. Insist on SSQ designed for societal benefit, not just shareholder return. Build audit trails and reversibility into every prototype. Democratise access, pilot public interest augmentation projects, not just premium consumer toys. These are practical, non-utopian steps. They won't make everything safe overnight, but they tilt the future toward dignity. 11. The experiment I promised. Next episode, I'll bring you an impossible pairing, a deep, blow-by-blow -blow technical walkthrough of a Xenobot experiment next to a BCI trial that restored speech. We'll see how the same themes, learning, memory, agency, play out at cellular and neural scales. Which one do you want first? Vote in the pinned poll now. A. Xenobot self-repair. B. Speech restoring BCI. The winner determines the next deep dive. If you loved this kind of thinking, subscribe, hit the bell, and share this with one person who should be on this conversation but isn't yet. 12. Not apocalypse, not salvation, but co-evolution. This is not a story of inevitable doom or effortless utopia. It is co-evolution, messy, reversible, audacious. We are learning that intelligence is a distributed tapestry, chemical, electrical, algorithmic, and that our job is to weave it with intention. Into that weave, bring curiosity, humility, and justice. If you want the reading list, papers, interviews, and annotated notes, I'll drop them in the description. If you want the checklist I use to evaluate whether a bio-AI project is safe and ethical, comment audit, and I'll pin a free one-page guide. I am Dr. Elena Karuba. If you want to shape evolution instead of being surprised by it, this is the conversation we need to keep having. Like, subscribe, and write one sentence. What kind of future body do you want to co-create?